you ready? We're ready. You can just, we can just start talking. Yeah, let's just. We, we, we normally don't. We don't start off like. There's no weird intros. No, we don't. No, do no weird, weird intros. intros. We like talk until we feel like. You we know, talk to do it started to be normal and be like <laughs> instead of being like, hey guys, it's like no, we're here. Hey, guess what? We're here. The drinking bros do that. Yeah, the drink. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Well, it's so cool that you guys have your own thing, and obviously, from what we're hearing, 38 in the world, which is huge. It's so. You it guys was are a doing pretty. Some good stuff. It was a pretty good launch. Launch. And we're really yeah. excited about it, and the fans listeners that we talked to and we've seen a bunch of them out here are uh very awesome super positive and i think they're gonna love you well, i think and so you too. guys are obviously yourselves so that makes a huge difference no one wants a sugar coated nonsense sure that's the thing. well that's we, the thing they're the like only hey thing we're, we can do. we're like hanging out with two friends who don't bullshit us and we're like okay this is I'm, we're, <laughs> we're glad you like us because we ain't changing folks. i think we both needed to do stuff sometimes whether it's like modeling or whatever that you're like i don't feel like i feel like i'm being i know and out, out here you we're mean? just not good at being I'm like so be chelsea sexy. took pictures yeah. of us yesterday like you know the other day and we've been having a great time out here but the big reason why we really came out here was to get some really good interviews yeah. from people and so of course when we were talking about interviewing i was like i have to get anna on yeah it was like pretty <laughs> much the first to. person that you said so, so we're that's excited who we actually have on here today folks um, we have Anna Paulina Luna here, yes, ma'am, <laughs> and uh, I am excited for you guys to get to know her a little bit more. Get to know the Anna that I actually know. Yeah, um, how did you guys meet? So I actually found her on Instagram of all places, but Look I think that. you know the reason why we connected is there's such this stigma. I think in the outside world, looking into what the military is, that women can't be feminine, and then also mm-hmm. too in the military. Yes. So. For me, obviously, being in the military, and I, I know she's dealt with it, but you have such a small number of women, but to find confident women that aren't going to tear you down. And so for me, it was reaching out, and obviously, our husbands ended up knowing each other through mutual oh, really? people and their yeah. end of things. So That's awesome. They met last year at SHOT Show, yeah, and, and it was like, no perfect. way, you know this guy? Like, yeah, I know this guy. It's it was, a small military world. It is world. a small military world, and so for me, it was more or less like connecting with another strong woman and kind of carrying that over into what I do now. I mean, that goes places. Obviously, you're doing... A podcast now but we had the pre-existing friendship and really to everything that she's doing i mean it's a hard thing to do and she's kicking ass and taking names so. she's been for sure she's been one of the ones we talked about with casey a little bit today where she's just really supportive right one yeah. of the ones supportive where it's like of women and yeah like so supportive much, yeah. and positive and like not talking people down and we've also well, just and side note too like i've carried that really into what i'm doing now so i have an all female staff do you basically. really yes yeah, so and i know Shout out to my amazing campaign manager. That's she's awesome. She's an awesome go-getter, so it's been great. Well, we'll get into that. So before we get into all of that right now, I want people to get to know who you are, yes. right? So <laughs> where are you from? How'd you grow up? Like, I know you joined the military. Like, tell us about your life. So for me, I mean, I don't have a normal life upbringing i think like when people look at me they're like oh you probably do starbucks and uggs which i do i do Hold this i do no shame but i mean my story and really what i'm passionate about it comes from somewhere so at 19 i joined the military i really spent majority of my adult life in the military and for me i have the utmost respect for the military because had it not been for that i probably wouldn't have had the structure that i really needed to excel at really an adult life Um, But because of that, obviously, I used my social media platform and what I really gained working in the civilian world to shed light on some certain issues. And so one of them was sex trafficking. I came across a military Mm -hmm. nonprofit called Veterans for Child Rescue. And I, at this time, really didn't know that that was an issue at the border. And also, too, helping to shed light on issues of PTSD. And so that's something that the military is still trying to, one, work on treatment, getting people the help that they need, but also, to breaking the stigma. And I think that Tiffany understands this, but, you know, and me being mil- married into the special operations community, a lot of these guys are not getting the help that they need. And mm-hmm. then, too, you look at it from a legislative perspective, and I know we're kind of going to get into that in a minute, but when you have people that are afraid of getting help because of, losing their civil liberties that's a problem and i think that that's where as veterans as a veteran community as spouses of military members you really have to take a stand and say okay look i might not like politics but i think i should probably get involved because right now i care about these people i care about this community and it's me doing due diligence to the people that sacrifice so much to really help serve the country Mm -hmm. yeah and i think when people hear politics they not not that they shut off but it seems like such a broad issue but now when you're talking about people 
is when people can start Correct. right yes. relating to it's it the stories i think sometimes right. when people think of politics though right you think of like the family <laughs> argument that you're having at the dinner table and everyone <laughs> or, yeah or right just, or they're talking yeah. about their views and then that's why people are like oh let's not talk about politics you can definitely talk and about things that you believe in and helping people and things for the greater good even if you don't agree and you're not on the same page together you could still talk about it like human beings. It's, it's, you know, it's a conversation you have with people. Obviously, I know we'll get into what I'm doing here in a minute. But really, you know, my passion really has stemmed from that community. And why I joined the military is because I wanted to go to college. I had no idea about how to even apply to school. Mm -hmm. I yeah. happened to be at a house party. It was on a Saturday. And I heard two guys that were my friends that were down at Camp Pendleton. They were Marines. Um, and they were talking about how the fact that the military was paying for them to go to school. So I went and found a recruiter literally that Monday. I enlisted. And then I told my parents right before I was going to be leaving to basic training. Oh, you Perfect. did? Yes. So you did it without their... <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I was... I mean, I just like went and did my thing. Good for and you. And I was like, hey, mom, I, I like need you to drop me off. And my parents were like, wait, what? Like hit the ceiling. My mom's like, you're joining the... Mil no one in our immediate family had a military connection. And then also too, mind you, my mom raised me on her own. My mm -hmm. dad was in and out of jail growing up had a drug problem so like for me i didn't really realize that my upbringing wasn't normal until i joined the military of all sure. things and then i was like oh well this is interesting i should probably do some self-reflection <laughs> a, a little bit of both why am i really into this yes yeah. what's going on here so but you meet some incredible people and i know tiffany will tell you that the military the one thing that it does do is bring people together mm -hmm. from all walks of life and you have the uniform so you're not really looking at who's wearing what and you're kind of just going to work and so i've met some incredible people to include you um really through my military experience and i will continue to support the military no matter where i'm at in life absolutely so did your mom was she supportive of your decision or was she supportive of it later on so when i first told her she literally i remember like i had the phone here uh -huh. and i could still hear her she's <laughs> like you're gonna die you're crazy what are you doing that sounds so like my she, parents yes yeah, she hit the ceiling literally and then after that she's like okay well i understand why you're doing it and of course i said mom i'm joining the air force i have a very safe job yeah um you know i'll be okay and then i think that she realized after that i was able to do so much and i really did help my family i was sending money home um, really oh, wow. during the first couple of years was in the military. And so for me, you know, she appreciated it. And so I was able to bring her out. I brought my family to the first state fair, which being in LA, we don't have state fairs. Yeah. I mean, no, you, side note, you guys will laugh, but um, the first time I ever saw a circular hay bale, it was when I was stationed at Whiteman Air Force Base no, in Missouri. Uh, I thought they were lawn decorations. I live in yeah. Missouri, so this was like normal. Well, like, yeah. oh, I'm, there's a hay bale again. I'm from, yeah, Los Angeles too. So it's like, so we, we saw hay bales and rectangles. You at the were that. Hatch. I didn't know you yeah. were that, that person because we used to have students go through SEER training, right? And they were like, I've never seen snow in my life. I'm like, how do you exist? I was the yes, <laughs> same person. We saw the man-made <laughs> stuff, right? If you yeah, go like mountain high yeah. or something. I just thought it was so funny Snow until Summit. I experienced Snow the Summit, same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So why did you pick the Air Force then? So I went and talked to an Army recruiter, actually, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a combat medic. And then he... I, I felt like I shouldn't really listen to everything he was saying. And there was another recruiter. They're like, you should go over to the other side. Go talk to the Air Force recruiter and kind of walked over. And then as it turned out, my mom had a friend that was in the Marine Corps. And then he told me, he's like, you're going to join the Air Force. Like that they have the better living conditions. And mm -hmm. I was like, living conditions? What yeah, is he what? talking about? Yeah. Found out later on what he was talking about. <laughs> you're like, about. yes, thank <laughs> yes. you very much. <laughs> So glad I listened to him. Obviously, yeah. ended up with the Air Force. Of course, my recruiter totally lied to me. Told me what did he I, say? He said that if I didn't take my job in airfield management, which for those listening, one Charlie seven five one was my AFSC. Totally dorky job. Definitely needed. Definitely dorky though. Uh -huh. um, he said that I wouldn't be able to join the military, which I now know was a lie. Oh, I'll never want to forget him. In. Yes, oh. Sergeant Lemon. I will never forget him. Oh. He was a lemon. Shout out, Lemon to Sergeant Lemon. Yeah, <laughs> coming for you. Coming for you. Liar. But you know, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things have a way of working out, and I actually ended up meeting Andy at the time, so it all kind of played Perfect. well. Yeah. I just only asked because I remember remember my dad was like, you can go into the military, but you're only going to go into the Air Force or Navy. Did he? Yes. <laughs> Why I, does that feel like better? I know. Because I, uh, I did parents, find out easier. that I wanted to do it, but I also told them, yeah. kind of hoping that they'd be okay with it. And he goes, hey, listen, I like talked to all my buddies and they said that the Air Force or Navy was the best for a girl because they definitely will take care of you and you have better opportunities. Well, and I think at the time too, the Navy was making people cut their hair. And so, were they? yes, they were. I remember. Yeah. So the you recruiting when? building, I, went, I joined in 2009. Okay. So I remember, and I don't know if that was just like an urban legend, but I remember the recruiters were all in kind of the same area. And so oh, for I, me, I was yeah. like, okay, 
well, I'm not cutting my hair. Yeah. So I <laughs> whatever I could go, too. but I don't yeah, have to do that. I had long hair like I did now and I cut it short purposely because I was like, I'm going to cut it. training, yep. I'm going to cut it nice first before you just oh, screw before you it up. just chop it. And I went to basic training with a short haircut and I was like, why did I cut this? And the worst part is I put it, I tried to put it in a ponytail the whole time in basic training, right? Yep. Just like slicking it back and put all the bobby pins in. And I didn't have to because it was short enough. I could just wear it down. Oh my gosh. I'm an idiot. Gosh, it's okay. You really messed up. I really messed you up. Really I really messed cute up. Every day. <laughs> I <know>. My hair <laughs> down. <laughs> so, what did you do when you were in? So, I did airfield management. Did you cross train or no? No, never cross trained. Okay. I actually requested all the night shifts. So, I would go to school really? in the daytime. And then I had this female sergeant. She was not a nice lady. So, as I got to my upper division level courses, I ended up transferring from a community college to the local university. They had an amazing biology department, so I actually ended up graduating from the University of West Florida over in Pensacola, which is an hour from Hurlburt. I would drive an hour to school after I would get off a night shift, and then I'd do my classes and then come home to sleep before the next night shift. And so that was my schedule. And then this woman, I kid you not, and I know my husband's sitting back over there, but she would literally start scheduling me on the days that I had classes so I wouldn't be able to go. So I ended up applying no. for early separation. My commander did let me out because Obama at the time was downsizing the military. Oh, yeah. So obviously I got an honorable. I wasn't kicked out or anything. Sure. And I was able to finish my degree. And then I came back into the guard once I had completed my bachelor's. Did you do the same thing in the guard too? Yes. Same thing in there? the guard. And it was during my gap year. So I was doing that, applying to medical schools. Uh -huh. um, later on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Later See? on, got into medical school. And then I had 24 hours to decide, was I going to go into go to medical school or was I going to take the political route and kind of help people in a different capacity? So, I remember this now because I remember you, you were there to accept capacity. it for her, you know, going through medical school and everyone was super excited, right? You had the balloons yeah. and like the picture and we're like, I yes! was really excited too. And then yeah. out of nowhere, she like hits me up and she's like, dude, I had like, it was one or the other, like yeah. opportunity. And I was like, I did, I did. I, I hit her up and I asked yeah. the day I had to make the decision. So, and it was what? one of those things too where I'm like, well, lucky you. Because <laughs> they're both really great decisions, yeah, right? Exactly. Like there's no negative to a it. A politician or a doctor, like. I'm so trying to figure out what sucks today. <laughs> when you were at the crossroads, what was it? Um, so again, going back to the counter trafficking organization, I realized that, and really too at the time, and I still have a great relationship with an organization called Global Surgical Medical Support Group. And so they are like Doctors Without Borders, except they will hire military veterans. A lot of people don't realize that Doctors Without Borders does not hire veterans because it's bad for their look. So Dr. Really? Epstein uh, okay. started Global Surgical, and they actually go to partner countries, and they'll train up their coalition forces to do humanitarian aid. And so they actually bring in women. They'll train some of the women in those areas. So they work very closely with the Kurds. Um, but he was amazing. I called him. He goes, you know, you have a chance right now to help more people at a legislative level in only two years than you would have your entire lifetime as a doctor. He's like, mm -hmm. you know, I will help you with a letter of recommendation if it doesn't work out, but I really think that you'd be making mistakes. So I talked to him. I called almost everyone in my phone book, and then yeah. I ended up calling the admissions department at the university I got into, and they're like, you know what? We respect that. You have a good relationship with us. Wow. Um, obviously, I'd already paid my deposit, so I didn't ask for it back. <laughs> but they right. said, we'll make a note in your file, and you know, the door's always open. Oh, that's going to so, feel good, though. It was, it was right? good, but it was such an intense thing. I mean, like Andy had already left lot. to go TDY. We said goodbyes. I was ready to go. I had yeah. purchased my plane ticket. Everything was packed, and then I was like, oh, my God. The minute that that time was like for where my plan was going to go, I was like, okay, this is going to be a huge life changing decision. And it was. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of just, you know, I think when you're on the right path, doors just open and it went from here to here very quickly. So, and yeah. So as soon as that clicked, yep. it just, it just went boom. It was like going on a trampoline, just like doing like Super Mario. You kind of hit the magic yep, mushroom yeah. or whatever and you go bloop, bloop, bloop. And so that's kind of what happened. So did you have people already that in your life that were kind of in the like, politician realm yeah. um so which is why i did the political arena i was so i came into this arena kind of as an activist and so i was fighting really talking on issues of immigration because of what i saw working with this counter trafficking organization and when i say working i was using my social media talking closely to, with the founder to get that information out there i think what i realized is that at the time i did not think that the news or that really digital platforms would censor truth. Mm -hmm. And really this, I'm not looking at this from a partisan perspective. This is an issue of you have kids that are children. It doesn't matter where they're from and they're being used for sex. They're being raped. And it's just like this really dark thing. Yep. And so I felt that I should, 
kind of shed light on that. I had a platform. If I really wanted to help people, I should be touching on that topic. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was trying to share that information. And I realized that the more I was going into that, that my own platform was being censored. And so that's obviously a problem because, you know, in the military, you take an oath to really uphold and defend the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That's free speech. I mean, I wasn't putting out hateful stuff. I was simply putting out the truth. And I was being shut down for it. And so... It went from me realizing how the media worked. I then started cycling onto Fox and I was like, you know what? These people are talking about what's happening at Capitol Hill and this message. I mean, there's so much change that needs to happen, but the right people aren't in office because a lot of people go into, and I think you see this in the media world. I mean, they do it for the wrong reasons. Either they want attention. It's a power trip for them. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of that. And I just realized as an outsider to DC, the the change, social media, politics, anything, but you can always tell who's really passionate about it versus who's in it for the wrong reasons. And so for me, looking at it from that perspective, I was driving home one day and I said, you know, I'm going to be running for Congress. And so I called Andy and he was at work at the STS yeah. and he was like, you know what? Um, all right, I guess we're doing this. So there's like no how <laughs> to run for office, yeah, but yeah. we kind of got the ball rolling. And I told work, I said, I love you guys, respect what you're doing, but I'm running for office. I'm stepping down. And I did. And we pulled the trigger. And so I'm here now, obviously on the campaign trail with you guys. <laughs> yes. That is crazy. But you're still, oh. your platform now is still having to do with immigration and yeah that's that the- so my my platform now I still shed light on immigration why we need to do it okay. the correct way yeah but I also too I mean I'm fighting very hard for gun rights for veterans okay and I say that people think that you know this whole thing that happened in Virginia recently you say the word guns I mean I have a very interesting life experience that's really allowed me to talk on from a personal story why I think that gun rights need to be protected in the way that they do so I know we don't have a lot of time but in a nutshell when I was nine I walked into an armed robbery and survived it I was with my dad at 16 one of the six high schools that I attended was Venice High School there was a shooting on campus I was there when it happened it was between gangs and then at 20 years old when I was at Whiteman Air Force Base I was allowed off base and I had a home invasion I did not own a firearm at the time and there was a dude that was at my house that was my friend because I had caught on to some things that were going on around the house that were super weird long story ended up being my landlord he was telling me that I was being paranoid that my roommate was messing with me he was basically gaslighting me yeah and what ended up happening is he had timed it to when the train went by I was getting home from (gasps) night shift and he broke in he thought I was alone and the guy chased him out so at the time my commander got involved ordered us back on base Jag got involved so it was this huge thing but it was really, you know, my life experiences told me, look, mm-hmm. people are going to do really bad things. Guns are not the problem. People are. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so right now what we're seeing is that veterans are targeted by red flag laws. And I have read through the legislation of that. And it says that if you suffer from a mental health condition, which according to the American Psychiatry Association is PTSD, is PTSD wow. you can't own firearms. And the thing is, is that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist here, but like when you look at these platforms that these people are running on, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, socialism doesn't care about that. And socialism and gun control go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And why would you want veterans, people who took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, have firearms when you're trying to push that agenda? And so sure. from my perspective, I have seen the legislation, the groundwork for it. And of course, then Ballistic Magazine gave the cover of their article for February to my campaign That's of amazing. their magazine. And Congrats, by the way. Thank you yeah. very much. We were very happy about that. Yeah. We've had an immense amount of support from the gun community, but of course, Instagram and Twitter shut it down. And so that is why, I mean... I was... Uh, I know. Yeah. Dude. She saw it. <laughs> yeah. she saw I did too it. because yeah. I was like, oh my God, hell yeah, Anna. And then I saw it posted again and I was like, why is it being posted again, right? Like maybe she didn't get a lot of yeah. engagement on it. And then I realized when you look at the rest of her page and just normal posts that don't have anything to do with politics, or they guns, get like 20, yeah. 20,000 or 25, 30,000 likes. And this one had like 5,000, yeah. right? When, After yeah. like a day or something. And when people would share it, their actual engagement would drop. And that's something that's common, right? And so... The reason I'm able to compete with some of the people that I can, I'm talking like heavy hitting politicos that have been in DC for a while is because I have the platform that I do. And that came from really working in the grassroots sector and kind of learning out how social media works. And Mm -hmm. so across all my platforms, I have around 400,000 people that follow me and those people have been donating. And then also to people in the district and now other people that are going to help with fundraisers. But the point is, is that they don't want new blood. Mm -hmm. They want that controlled power. And these people do get rich off of 
greasing the wheel when it comes to certain legislative yes. policies. And so I think that no matter who you are, if you're listening to this right now, you need to realize that one, you should be taking part of the process. You know, if you're going to enjoy the American freedoms, you need to be fighting for them too, whether that's helping candidates get elected or you yourself running. But that also too, you need new blood in DC. The founding fathers never anticipated for it to be a lifetime job. You're supposed to do your service, mm -hmm. represent your community, yep. represent the people and then get out. Mm -hmm. Like you're not supposed to make it a 30 year yeah. thing. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, for the rest of it's your not life. Like, let's retire in Congress. It's you know? dictatorship. Like, really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. Little, you might be a little too old for this now. Like <laughs> you can I retire think, in yeah. the military, not in Congress. I mean, exactly. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Well, we talked about it a little bit yesterday too, um, with Trump, right, being elected, and every it just shocked the entire yeah. nation because they were like, "How did this guy who has no political background affiliation at all get elected?" And I think it's because. So many people are so fed up with the empty promises that politicians are just literally, you know, throwing out there to everyone. Hey, I'm going to make these changes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they get in office and they don't see any of it happen. And they're not real people. I right? mean, like no one has a perfect life. No one has this like cookie cutter, you know, image that they project to people like people want that real grit and i think sure. trump says what it is i mean yep. if you hear him talk he <laughs> backs it up and guess yeah. what he's held true to his campaign promises so yes i mean people are gonna be like oh i can't believe she supports the president well yeah i like a president that's gonna do a good job and you know what um with what happened just recently with iran i'm sorry but the united states doesn't have to answer to anyone mm -hmm. and i guarantee that if my husband was there i would sure as hell want the president of the united states to back that damn embassy because yes. there's good people yeah. overseas you know it i know yes. you know it yeah but some of these people who have their head in the sand in oh, DC Lord. don't know it we talked about we even just talked yeah, about we did an episode right <laughs> after that some celebrities that was like really yeah. why what is your deal right now like They're why removed. are you glorifying this murderous man right now thinking like are you kidding they you just do know have, anything about him they have no context so in order to understand <clears throat> nuances like that you have to follow politics you have to follow mm -hmm. things you have to get involved if you only hear one thing it's out of context and sure. they're fucking freaked out and you out. should always <laughs> and read that's easy both nowadays sides, right yes. like if you exactly. want a form of well you know even your argument you should always know the other side and know the other perspective yeah. and so um i really am good with my messaging i think i talk from a lot of personal experience i don't know everything and i'm the first person to admit that and yeah. so when i need help when i you know want to seek advice i have counsel and i think that that's important to remember so like now i'm currently running against the former governor of florida and oh, he's wow. been a Republican, an independent, and now he's a Democrat. So in his mm. 30 years in office, he's been every single party. And, no. you know, I think the people are, they're catching on now. Like, yeah. maybe this guy, this, make any sense. Yes. this makes zero sense. And who Does is he, he stand for anything? Yeah, yeah. no exactly. backbone. Yeah. But um, it's, you know, I am a grassroots candidate. I have been told by a lot of people that I guess I'm a breath of fresh air in, in regards to the political arena. And it's mm -hmm. because I'm myself. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. And, you know, I'm down to talk to whoever it is. If they don't agree with me, I'll have the conversation. But I think it takes people, again, to be willing to do that, to get that new blood into D.C. And I really think that it'll help save the country. And, you know, moving forward, I am working on some projects. I'm actually going to be co-producing a documentary with PragerU, which is a very big nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they asked me, they said, if you were going to do a show, how would you do it? And I said, well, I need to help the people that I believe that are going to help further this message. And so I'm giving every single person that I've worked with and hand selected over the past year and a half, their own episode on my show. Oh, wow. And so, you know, they get their platform. And yeah. I think that that's part of the thing. If you want to empower other people to spread that message, if you believe in it, mm -hmm. you can't be the only person to do it. It's your job as a good leader to empower other people to carry that message for you. So that's what we're doing. And mm -hmm. you're building your army. Yes. I feel like you <laughs> learned that a little bit from the military too. A hundred percent. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You were taught from day yeah. one, like to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower and you have to take care of your guys. And you, you have want to listen to succeed. too. Absolutely. So I love that you she take got that. To, she got, well, <laughs> you get it. You get it. Well, this, is this little life nugget. Well, that's how it is. Life it when you work in a restaurant too, you know, you really need to. I also, <laughs> I also did that. Yeah. You're a server too? Yeah. Yes. You know. You know that life? You know that life? So, Side hustle in college. Yeah. Yeah. What is, so if you can talk to us a little bit about kind of you, you, a little bit more about your campaign and like what kind of your big stances on things, right? Okay. And then even just maybe 
what people need to know about you if they want to vote for you, especially in the state of Florida, right? Yeah, like my so, sister's there, so, so I'm, I'm sure she would love to hear. So yeah. I'm running in Florida 13, which is okay. a congressional district. So for people who might not know how the congressional runs work is that every state is divided into districts based on population. And so my district specifically is Pinellas County area. So we're about 15 minutes from Tampa. Okay. Um, it encompasses a majority of Pinellas County. And so it's a very awesome area. Obviously the beach is a huge factor. And the one interesting thing is I think people think that Republicans and conservatives are anti-environment and it's not true. In fact, I'm the first person to recycle. I obviously I am for this. limited mm -hmm. government and limited plastics is what sure. I say. I'm not trying to ban straws, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying like, <laughs> hey, look, if China's going to destroy the oceans, I think I can just go ahead and drop something in recycling here and Absolutely. there. Yeah. So um, I think it's part, you know, what I'm trying to do is also rebrand the party a little bit to show that I care about the environment. You know, you look at the history of politics and really the Republican Party and Teddy Roosevelt was a constant conservationist and he's really the one that you know let out the fight for the environment and I think that we've kind of as a party the Republican Party and so for those wondering I'm a Republican candidate yeah um yeah. but has been branded so unfairly and so that for me is a huge thing so I'm a green conservative but then also too in my district specifically there is a huge problem with the opioid crisis so one person really? dies every 36 hours from an opioid oh overdose my goodness so tying into kind of the pharmaceutical industry and really what's happened there. People don't realize that in DC, if you don't have people that are really fighting for the people, they're going to be fighting for these organizations yeah. that want to make a buck and they make a buck off the American people and, you know, drugs and pharma. That's really something that impacts all people. It doesn't just stay in lower income communities. It will shoot right up to the wealthiest people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure we've all some way in shape or form been connected to someone who has been directly affected by drugs yes. and really opioids are legal drugs and so for me that's a huge problem it's something I'm very passionate about that obviously ties into something very personal with me so I'd have to say that if someone was wondering really what my stances are I'm obviously definitely an anti-socialist yeah. I'm definitely pro-gun pro-god and pro-life and so mm -hmm. again that those are my stances and I've had a lot of personal experience with that but um, there's things that I think that we as a people need to start saying no to socialism is a big one. There's not going to be mm. any parties if we're a socialist country. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's a little scary when you, when you come to think of it. Yeah. And I'm not bit. trying to be like scary on the right. podcast. No, 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 no. I'm just saying like, like when you be realistic about the whole socialism, movement. I like that when you're like, just so you know, I'm a Republican candidate because you, uh, you're right. The way that you talk very, it's not. You're changing the brand of it. Sorry. It's but do you know what I mean? Where like people are like, is she, what but, is she? Yeah. But, but like, too, I like that. In media, when I started to kind of roll on with bookers, I was actually told um, as a joke, the guy was in joking, goes, you know, if you were to switch parties, switch teams, you'd be an overnight star. Especially yep. if you were a Democrat? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And he's, and he was serious. Mm -hmm. And I said, back to him i i love my guns and god too much to do that so what am and i gonna so, do yeah so and you know it is an uphill battle you're running against what is publicly accepted in media yeah and you will get destroyed for it but yeah. you have to have thick skin and there's so many more people that are, i think think the way that i do they just don't necessarily vocalize that because they're worried about being attacked and you can't worry about that you can't live your life like that and so mm -hmm. i've chosen to live myself publicly as a conservative yeah and i love every moment of it yeah that's gotta be hard though isn't it like you're constantly being scrutinized you're underneath the magnifying glass microscope even more so like you know in the military right being a female and yeah. like we have just kind of like the light on us at all times people are always looking at what we trying do. to throw you under the bus right Huge just, one. They're just do they like, yes well sometimes with certain females so even in my career field a little bit there were some times where i was scrutinized more and they were waiting for me to screw up more oh for sure and, and if i did for the sure. same screw up as a guy the guy it was fine but i mm -hmm. particularly was getting there's a i, I can say this and i know that she's experienced too there is a lot of women in the military that get very jealous and so mm -hmm. they look to social media and they see posting and it just becomes like I've literally had to pull out the AFI and be like, show me right here where it says I can't post X, Y, and Z. Like, I'm not, you oh know, my gosh, I'm not yes. posting my politics in uniform. Get out of here. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Like, oh, you know how, do you, how can you look so beautiful in uniform? Oh, shut up. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm in my uniform. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, but people do. They like a petty stuff. So, how has it been then? Because it's more magnified now, right? People can say just the nastiest stuff behind a profile that's a fake name, private mm, profile. Yeah. And so, 
I got to the point where I was like, you know, I don't really care. Like, if I don't like what you have to say, like, you get kicked off my profile. And, like, I don't really care. I'm yeah. not going to expose myself to abuse. Block. So yeah. I have a fat comment filter section. Like, and I've had to get creative with the words because people say just rude Oh, my things. gosh. Do you put all the words Literally, in there? Literally, I put, like, the new words. Like, if you come up with a new insulting word, I'm going to add it to my comment filter. And my Smart. comment filter is, like, this big. <laughs> I like but that. I don't, I don't care what people have to say. I really don't. Like, yeah. unless you're, like, my mother. And, you know, if I'm fighting for the right thing, I really yeah. have thick skin. So for me... You know, if I have some something insulting that happens, I'm like, it doesn't phase me. And mm-hmm. I say yeah. that because you cannot be sensitive in this arena at all in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So I don't, don't, definitely right now. But don't people try like... to play dirty, though? Oh, they do all right? the time. You know, like opponents and think like, think about it. Anyone will try just like they did with Trump. Right. To try to they make up lies. videos or lies or there's like anything they can try to dig up from your past. They have they have they will stop at nothing. But you know what? I have a huge microphone. And mm-hmm. I am who I am and I'm okay with owning that people that know me, my family, like my husband knows exactly who I am. So if you want to try to come for me, then you're going to be sorry for it. Cause I'll hit you back 10 times harder. And I'm I not afraid it. of that either. I love it. So on pumped. Fox news, right? And you were on water's world. Yeah. Who were you Wait, talking? She, she, she was on water's world. Okay. This is okay. water and this is my world, right? <laughs> okay. This is the thing. And, um, she was talking with someone and I just remember. Was it the professor? Was there was it? There was someone who was just. Pissed. It was. She was a professor from John Hopkins. I yeah. Think, okay. And I think it's like Dr. Wendy something or other. My and man. she was. We were talking about what was happening during the kneeling during the national anthem. And she was. First of all, I don't. The lady is not a nice lady. Okay. But frankly, right now, what we were really getting to, and I actually got in a argument with her on Waters World and it actually ended up on the shade room which at the time I didn't know what the shade room was on Instagram (laughs) the shade room is this huge like it's almost like TMZ but it's on Instagram check it out later okay Um, but we ended up on there and just like I was looking through the comments and you know at the end of the day kneeling during the national anthem super disrespectful Mm -hmm. okay you shouldn't be doing it yeah but she was trying to say that it was okay that you know people like Dak Prescott were really called awful like uh, literally a lemonade serving house n-word um by other people in the black community because he didn't agree with kneeling during the national anthem and frankly that's what politics has come down to is if you go against the popular mainstream belief for Mm -hmm. especially minority communities you're all of a sudden a sellout to your community and so for I got a huge debate with her about that Mm -hmm. and that was definitely her fire came out and everyone was like yes yeah. Yeah. like people were posting it like i couldn't believe it i was yelling at my tv yeah, I like, love it. it was great but that's you're great one but she's great on there though because yeah. you stick you're you're very strong on your stance you're very educated on right Thank you. On what you believe and no she really is it's not like she's just she's like not Cortez. insulting people you or, know just i haven't it over i use one facts about, and personal yep. experience yep. and it's pretty it's a hard argument against yep. that so and so it's great watching her on there because you're like no this totally makes sense if you know and then it makes the other people look like crazy yeah we'll let them just they let some, some of these people though yeah. are very i mean you, you realize that a lot of times they're given talking points and that mm-hmm. they don't even know what of they're course. fighting for because if they truly did um either they're just really bad people or they're definitely controlled by people that have an invested interest in pushing that agenda so yeah i feel like the news too though is purposely going to take two very opposite ends of the spectrum and maybe even explosive personalities and put them together because people do like drama and it's ratings and it's ratings. And that's why a lot I mean, of people are going to podcasts and radio yeah. for their information. So because the news, yeah. we kind of, I've kind of mentioned this before. I don't know. Um, I said, I don't know if people might agree with me. This might be an unpopular opinion, but you know, we, I was trained in interrogation methods right and propaganda is a big one of them and the yes, news and that's what it is mm-hmm. it's propaganda and it's, that's what people don't propaganda. Really it's yeah. propaganda yeah you call it that and people are like "Ooh, wait a minute when you, right, when you no, put thing. yeah it literally fits the definition mm-hmm. of it hands down is when you put that label on it people start actually thinking going wait is that really true and that's why i was telling people the same thing that you did you you need to watch different news networks you shouldn't just be getting everything and also too if they're saying bills look up the bill a lot of times they won't tell you what bill it is you should be reading these things they'll say oh like it's a nice term but you should be always doing your due diligence making sure that because sometimes people can be wrong Mm -hmm. yeah i think people think that just because you're on television and you're you're loud that you're right yeah yeah no there's a lot of idiots that end up on television and i think (laughs) that you know working in that industry i mean look at cardi b is like literally talking about clapping her ass cheeks and now she wants to run for congress no it doesn't no. work like that. Well, can we talk about that really quick? Because there's a lot of... She's no, like, there, bring not it just on. even I'm that, fine. but there's I'll a lot fine. of... Yeah. Yeah. You were in the, um, like, and what, celebrity world? 
You're in the celebrity world. Yep. And no, so, I'm but there's in the been, entertainment, the entertainment right? world. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I meant. You're busy. And so there's a, a lot more entertainers out there be becoming a lot more vocal. vocal and public about their political opinions. So how does that... Like, it, for me, it feels like it's fine if you actually, like you, you see a problem, you see people that, are, that you can help, and you use your platform for that. It feels like they're using their platform for for themselves That's they are they yeah. know that they get attention and yeah. the thing is right now is there are conservatives in hollywood but they're so afraid of so afraid. losing their jobs mm -hmm. because that's a thing i mean we shouldn't be that's not what you served for that's not what andy mm -hmm. served for i served for to where people can't come out with their political beliefs i mean what is this russia yeah. like you're yeah. afraid of the secret i mean that's where it's going mm -hmm. yeah so it's unfortunate because that's really the ideologies i mean you go out to la people are like oh you're a republican you know, oh like, you can't even it. like say it right you can't yeah. even say it so for me i kind of just you know if i've lost i lost friends when i came out as a republican see that's what i was gonna ask and isn't that crazy it's it's crazy but if you were my homie before you found out or as and then all of a sudden you can't, you're not my anyway. homie anymore yeah and so i did a life cleanse yeah and I, guess what i made some amazing friends in the political arena we see eye to eye um they respect what i have to i mean you know sometimes we disagree on certain policies but they're still there for me and they respect me for what I'm doing. And so yeah. if that's what it took, then fine. I don't want someone that's going to be a fair weather friend anyways, especially no. not in this arena. Or Everyone not be able to say what you support. Yeah. That's insane, right? Yeah, Everyone insane. needs yeah. a life cleanse. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Come, out and I right. think, come out with your political beliefs if you want to cleanse your life. I think oh, my It'll work, right? Yes. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. That's another <laughs> when thing, Trump too, was elected, I think we all got a little... For, uh, life cleanse, as you well, say. Ellie says oh, spiritual cleanse. My goodness. Yeah. All you have to say is, I support President Trump. You will get a life cleanse oh. instantly. Just do that. They'll good drop energy. like flies. Yes. Right? <laughs> left and right, unfollow. You might lose a few thousand followers, but sure. it's okay. Life cleanse. It's fine. It's a good idea. I actually. mean, there's a reason why I don't talk about a lot of stuff on social media know, but... on my account, mainly because I don't want to deal. Like, I don't care about the followers. I don't mind losing a bunch. Like, they yeah. probably bother me. Um, and, but the biggest thing is I don't want to be in arguments about that all the time. Like, I don't I don't want to have the, like, the animosity and all that, at least for yeah. me, like, on my personal page. Yeah. I, I like pe when people can get along on my page. and like, hey, you're cool. You're rad. Yeah. And um, you do some good videos, too, to your credit. <laughs> oh, and very funny videos. Thanks. Would you funny. post about your political views? Uh, no, and I don't. But um, I also um, have this podcast. I think people, I, I'll talk to anyone. That's, That's the thing. Good. Like, I'll mm -hmm. talk to anyone that wants to talk to us. There are some people that won't because we feel we are conservative mm -hmm. a little bit more. So there are people, either liberals, that won't come on the show. And that's crazy to me because we're open to it. Well, I feel like we're open being, to a conversation. Yeah, and I think and, you are as well. And I feel like with the military, people are like, OK, so obviously, you know, drinking broettes, probably pretty conservative. And I yeah. say that because obviously yeah. Kavanaugh liked beer. But like right. during the hearing, all of a sudden, right. if you liked beer, it was like, yeah, well, you're exactly. a bad person. Like, goodness, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> yeah, you got awesome. two beers, you're an alcoholic. Like, so what? Yeah. He's like, I was like 60. The guy was such a good guy. He literally I had know. his oh, nose. I, I mean, you just felt terrible for the, the guy. Yeah, his calendar. And he wrote it, he wrote. and I'm like, you Which, know what? You damn bullies. Leave the man alone. Seriously. <laughs> you know what, Kavanaugh? I like beer, and I'll have a beer for you, too. Yeah, exactly. you're watching this, I got Can you. I just, <laughs> everyone gave him shit about the calendar. I did that. Did you do that? That's me. That was me when I was younger. It's just the fact just, is that I they had thing. nothing. I needed, yeah, they maybe. made false allegations. Oh, yeah. And I was in D.C. during those hearings, and I can tell you that there was organizations that were actually organizing those rallies. There's also pink really? protesters. They, they were running oh, yes. on Craigslist. But this was a complete political hit job because they didn't want someone at the level that he was at because they don't to the position exactly yeah, they don't want talk. him there because he's going to protect the constitution Absolutely. and honestly um i'm not trying to like plug any more political stuff right here but Please. planned parenthood was organizing a lot of the protests against him oh yeah and for me we were trying we they were running a hit job on a man who was innocent and ended up having ruth who's like one of the oldest women currently right now working as a judge and she backed him but the point is is that they did not want him in office for a reason and they didn't care what they had to do to really smear him as a good person and honestly yep. if you're bringing up beer i mean mm -hmm. then you know three quarters of the nation is just screwed <laughs> yeah we're all done it, well, to so many people that was obvious mm -hmm. right yeah that was i love that the beer was the thing that separated us all. i know but, people were yeah. just like this is getting ridiculous well like, you know what i found a little bit ironic though is that doctor Right, the the chick who was oh, accusing him of Dr. it, Dr. Blazy Ford. Blazy Ford. She, yeah. yeah, I couldn't even remember her name. Um, 
That's she good. yeah, it's a good thing. She just fell off the face of the earth after she all actually, of that. Yeah, there she was tried. a GoFundMe, a couple GoFundMe's. That I heard were, she got like a million dollars or something like that. Yes, and and for, well, not unfortunately, but what what happened with her is that she had been very vocal and she had some connections, political connections. Mm-hmm. You saw her circles. So yeah, she came out, made false allegations, and literally this man. Kavanaugh had his ex-girlfriends come and testify saying like, hey, look, he was a good guy. People from his high school, I can tell you, I don't even know if I talk to people from high school anymore. But oh, the guy yeah. was such a yeah. good person that people were going and oh, yeah. shutting down her him, argument yeah. left and right. But the fact that they could do that and that they would politically orchestrate that, I mean, I don't care if you are a Democrat or Republican. I don't care if you identify as a rock. You should be realizing that that's pretty bad. No, Absolutely. his whole life was turned upside down and completely changed. I can only imagine... They're talking his wife, his feeling, kids, oh everything. Oh my gosh. And, and the death threats and everything he was getting. That was at the height of Me Too. So the fact that he mm. actually got in isn't a testament to actually how, because they could not deny that it didn't happen. They Do you were know pushing, what I mean? And that was Me Too. So they were pushing everyone, a guilty until yeah. innocent narrative. Yeah. And I think everyone that has a husband, a brother, a cousin, a best friend that's a guy got very concerned at that point because oh, sure. you cannot, and I can say in the military, son? Yeah. I have seen cases of false rape allegations Mm -hmm. against men and it destroys people's careers and that's not how it should be okay i'm not saying that sometimes guys don't do bad things there are bad people in the world but you cannot push that narrative guilty until proven innocent that's not what we're founded on yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely no that was that was a that was a big eye-opening thing for me me worry about my sons yeah. at that time no exactly it was a very big topic of conversation even at work and ruin your entire life Especially for Supreme Court. That's one of the most honorable positions currently oh, yeah. existing in the land, right? And yeah. they wanted to just destroy him, destroy him, destroy him. And you know what, though? I think a lot of these people, I mean, they have to answer to God one day. Yeah. They're bad people. And I'm yeah. sorry, but this man was innocent. He still got in without, you know, everything that they put against him. He exactly. Still got in, so. And I think that should prove itself, like I'm saying, especially at the time that it was happening. Yeah. Because, you know, it was a... It was a witch hunt at that time. So the fact that, the <laughs> fact that he got in just shows that there was there was a calendar. He had a dorky little calendar. I know, and I loved it because I was like, I did that shit too I when I was younger. I love it. And I need to do it now because I have a terrible memory, which is like the worst part. Yes. Well, perfect. You know? So with your campaign, um, how much longer, right, do you have on the campaign trail? Yeah. So, like, I want to hear all about this because I feel like having a team <laughs> Oh, people, right? Yeah. Keeping me in line. <laughs> Literally. Like, a little bit helping great. me out. If it was Tiffany, you need to drink water today. You didn't eat anything. Do it right now. No, that <laughs> actually happens. Like that. Uh, yeah, I do it to, yeah, I do it to you. Happens. Yeah. Kinda. So, um, so basically if it was not for my campaign manager, I mean, yeah. she's like the glue to everything and hustles every step of the way. But Andy does remind us both like, Hey, you haven't eaten yet. <laughs> hey you girls. Food? Yes. <laughs> Let's like calm down. Eat, <laughs> yeah. It's a 24 hour job. So we do have a primary and that means that I'm going up against another Republican for the actual, um, nomination to go okay. against then the Democrat who's currently holding the position. So okay. there's a primary in August, there'll be a general in November. And then obviously you can find out more information about my campaign at vote on a you can find me on all of my social media platforms, usually fangirling with Tiffany, but <laughs> at Real Anna Paulina. I love it. And, what um, different social media platforms do you have? You I, have I know you have Twitter. I have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much every platform that exists except for TikTok. I was going to ask you about that. I'm not on the TikTok because I don't want the Chinese listening. And I'm sorry, but if the military was like, you shouldn't be on TikTok, I'm definitely not on TikTok. So. Oh they said the military said they didn't say well maybe they kind of did yeah they probably. definitely yeah, the military probably. said do not have it on your um government cell phone which hello like obviously yeah. but, anyway. um, but i guess recruiters were the only ones who had that on there the only thing that made me nervous because i was talking to you about it yeah. is i just I posted a video of just me like taking off my blouse and like my boots, like, you know, this stuff you normally do at blouse, the end of the day. for people listening is like the over, not yeah, the actual like your, blouse. No. It's, like, oh my her, God. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They know that. I wasn't yeah. stripping, yeah, guys. Blouse, military blouse is yeah, like the top of your shirt. Over yeah. it. Um, you know, just taking <laughs> off the normal things that you do on a daily basis when you get home. Like, <laughs> oh, take off the boots. I'm such a, str- I'm a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, oh my gosh, I was just stripping. I was just and stripping. And I can't believe they liked it. It went viral. And I think it's like over 8 million views right now. Uh, but I'm getting a lot of, a lot of, um, yeah. What are the stats on that? A lot of people from the middle East. Yeah. Follow it's definitely know. people forget that social media and for I was like, as fun as it is, wow. it can be dangerous. It, no, it, yeah. it, it can be. Well, I know for a while there, even on social media, there was, and it still is a thing. It, the whole romance scammers. Oh, 
Yes. That's ridiculous. Yes. People will steal, especially uniform service members, their photos for dating yeah. applications. They scam people for Google Play cards. I had someone actually scamming this guy and he got creepily obsessed, started messaging. Mind you, I've been with my husband for 10 years. Yeah. She's like, I can't believe you cheated on me. I, and I'm like, I know. okay, look, oh, no, they're guy. Crazy. They're, they're nuts. They're crazy. And I was like, look, um, first of all, this is a verified account. The other profile that you're talking to, not this name. Yeah. was not me. You're probably talking to a guy. Literally, he said that he was sending Google Play cards, I think, to Somalia. I was like, does it look like I'm in Somalia right now? Mm -hmm. And aside from that, you sent Google Play cards to someone that you didn't know. Stop meeting people on the and internet. And you never FaceTimed and you never got a, like yes. any video. They, like, it's actually dangerous. It's super wow. dangerous. So when I had my larger page, it got so bad right which i was kind of telling her because she makes fun of me she'd be like oh the real tiffany heart is there oh, like fake ones you? out no. there i'm like actually there is yes there's it's my a job to make um, to make because it was one of those things though too where all of a sudden um people were like people contacted my mom yeah it scared mom. me yeah like they found my sister's facebook and they were like stealing some of her pictures they contacted my cousin because my cousin was like linked on facebook and my cousin's like hey are you okay like this guy's telling me you're in the hospital and you can easily see my face like superimposed on this chick who's in the hospital bed really bad they have photoshopped military ids yeah um no. passports and then my mom got like a phone call with a really weird voicemail and then she got like a text message it was like hey is this like it said something about Tiffany and she was like, oh, what was this? And that was when I shut down that profile and I was I, like, I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to make it private. I'm going to watermark it I at least for now. One. I mean, it's public now I, so i don't know what's happening but, but we are market. it's tbd if how long it's sure. gonna be public well, I might change it here there, but it's scary right yeah, yeah, people it's crazy do exploit they can gather information on it you can get actually ip at where you can get um the geolocations of certain oh, photos yeah, yeah. it's coded into that yeah so this is stuff that people don't realize but social media as great as it is for messaging mm -hmm. it also can be used to monitor pull intelligence and is used by foreign nations to gather intel so you have to be really careful what you're posting I sound like a creepy person right now, but no. it's, it's out there. And no, it's, no, no, no. So you have to be careful yeah. about what you're posting. That's part of the concern with TikTok is that China was using it to gather information as to what was happening with government officials. <sighs> right? I knew it. I know. Our dads, China, were, our dads been right on TikTok. Yes. Our dads have been like telling us this for years. And we're like, dad, you're crazy. There's no way. No, yes. dad, you're right. And he's, now he's <laughs> yeah, right. So our dad's like phrase is I just know. like, they're watching. They're, they're, they're going to get you. They're always going to get you. They're just, coming just to be wary. Um, uh, so <laughs> should we see what her bro would be? Yeah, we can. So what we so. do here on the podcast is we have a drinking bro of the okay. week where we want to kind of honor someone that the community has basically, you know, basically they nominate a special woman or someone in their life. And so this one, um, this week is from Hartley. He said, hey, ladies, I just want to tell you that I love your podcast. been listening to drinking bros for a while. And I'm so glad that you guys, they added this to the addition. I would like to nominate my wife. Her name's Whitney and she's a breaking, I would like to nominate her as a drinking bro of the week. She has overcome so much in her life, including abusive traumatic events when she was young and um, going through drug addiction. She's been clean for 10 years now and recently achieved her lifelong dream of becoming a law enforcement officer at the same department that I work at. When me and her first met, I recently lost my previous wife to suicide. Wow. And I was in a very dark place. And from the moment I saw her, the darkness all completely went away. And she brought this bright light back into my life. I can't express how proud I am of her and how fortunate I am to have her in my life. We've been listening to the podcast on our commute to and from work all the time. It helps us decompress from our hard days. And it brings us a lot of humor um, through our tough days. So I just want to say thank you guys for all you do. And Whitney. Whitney. Wow. What a Good strong, job, girl. amazing woman. And thank you for... Your Obviously, service, yeah, yes. your you service. Both. You saved yes. your life. Uh, you saved like your husband's, your husband's life, life and you're saved. saving everyone's life on yeah. a daily basis. So thank you both for everything you guys do. Yeah. So where can so where can people find you? Where can they help? How can they help? How can they help? So right now I need donations. I okay. need donations because obviously, and I'm not getting paid by my campaign. No. I am literally doing this. A lot of this. people don't understand Yes, that. I'm yeah. not taking a salary from the yeah. campaign. So this goes directly to getting me elected. So you can donate online at votesanapaulina.com. If you go to any of my social media handles, which is at Real Paulina, I think I'm verified on all platforms except for Twitter. So don't give to a Somalian pirate, please. Yeah, please <laughs> no don't. Google no. Play cards. <laughs> Only donations at Vote Paulina, And you can find those links on all my 
platforms, I need, it doesn't matter if it's five, 10, a hundred, if you're feeling giving a thousand, yeah. go ahead and give a thousand. Yeah. Um, but I need donations. So if you can donate again, vote on apolina.com. Mm-hmm. We need it. I'm trying to get to Congress and if I can, I'm going to be helping the veteran community in a very serious way. So that's my end goal. And I really hope to lead out the new fight and to help represent really the conservative party moving forward in 2020. Absolutely. And I'm excited for you. I know. Thank I'm you. pumped. See what, like, you are... and what comes of this. You're good at this. You <laughs> Thank like, you. No, pumped. you're great like, at I was it. like, pumped. yeah, I got it. <laughs> well, she was sitting it. there getting wild up. She's like, I'm ready to fight with you. Like, what do you want? <laughs> so, I like it. And Thank that's you. the big thing awesome. I think I said yesterday is, you know, I we, I don't have a lot of money and that's one thing I was going to ask like no, hey she's people been, can just give like yeah. five dollars or <laughs> yeah. something because I will keep giving you like my Absolutely. coffee fund yes, if I can nothing, if yeah. that helps so any little bit helps yes is there any parting words that you want to give our listeners here today yeah I think that a lot of people don't be afraid of really owning who you are this is really what it's coming down to if you don't speak up on things that are going wrong in society you're part of the problem so you know, it might be rough at first, but you'll be a lot happier in the long run. And it'll really help a lot of people, I think, moving forward. At the end of the day, I think one of the things that is so great about the United States is that we have that freedom to say and do what we want. Mm -hmm. But there are people who don't want that. And it really comes down to economic and social control. And I think that if you really see, if you want a good future for your kids, for your grandkids, for yourself, um, you have to take a stand for something. And so now is the time to do it. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till you have people knocking on your door saying hey you know you're a veteran we we need your firearms that's wrong fight take a stand fight for something and i'm here to help you guys along the way i love it see? thank you Look, see we're ready that's for it I'm let's do it about. <laughs> all right we're I behind you. you we're pumped the best of luck with everything um i'm excited to see your journey into being a congresswoman in Florida. Yep. Like, how awesome it's would that be? Like, later on, like, listen, I have a friend. I'm going to have my like, like, are you kidding? Like, I was on Drinking bro <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but this was a savage campaign and I still won. There so. you go. <laughs> right? Thank you. So, well, good luck with everything. I can't wait to see it all. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, we're out, guys. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl on yeah, don't y'all better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes.